but Wednesday's Bible study convicted me and God said you need to preach it on Sunday and so we're just going to preach about the cross for a little bit <laughs> amen and we thank God for the cross we thank God for the songs about the cross amen we thank you we thank God for what he we thank Jesus for what he performed at the cross amen and you may be seated at this time God gave the law the law of Moses in the Old Testament many of us know ten of them which are the Ten Commandments for one purpose and one purpose only and that is so that the world would have the knowledge of sin and recognize their need for a Savior. Without the law, there would be no realization of sin. It's just like going down the freeway. If there was no speeding limit signs, you wouldn't know that you are going over the speed limit. It's one, you have the speed limit. Now it's in your conscience that if you're going 5, 10, 15, 20, Lord have mercy, if you go 30 miles over the speeding limit, in your conscience you know that the cop's going to give me a ticket. No recognition of sin equals no need for a Savior. If God had not given the commandments and the laws for the children of Israel to abide by, there would be no limit in their life for a need of a Savior. For instance, the, the law that God gave the children of Israel would be as high as this ceiling. How can I as a human ever reach the ceiling? It is impossible. And because of the law, no man can say he is not a sinner and no man can say that he doesn't need a savior for every time you saw the ceiling of this church you understood no matter how many times you try to leap and leap as high as you can you would never be able to reach the ceiling the law was like a mirror that exposes our flaws but can't take it away you ever notice you're driving down the freeway and you look in the mirror and you notice you have a, a black thing on your tooth you're like, oh my god now the mirror is there to expose the flaw but it you can't rub your teeth around the mirror to take blemishes away this ceiling is just a reminder that the laws of God are way too high for me to ever perform my best. But I thank God that even though the mere's purpose was to expose my blemish, but could never take it away, I'm so glad that on the cross, Jesus died. And he shed his blood. And it's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us here today. That is why when we talk about the blood of Jesus, we can't help getting excited and emotional because we know that we can never reach the ceiling. But I'm so glad that Jesus came to us. I'm glad that he was robed in human flesh and he showed and displayed his love for humanity at the cross. Since the law was not designed to make you godly, but to expose your ungodliness, you can continue to try to be perfect and do good, but you will always fail. Why? Because we are human. Yeah, you'll be amazed, the person sitting next to you, what they've been thinking, where they've been at, what their conversation has been. But thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. You know that motto, I just don't go to church because they're hypocrites. Well, you know what? Nobody is perfect. 
And yes, we all got flaws. And yes, we all have our shortcomings. But I'm so glad for the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad for the blood of Jesus Christ that has washed each and every one of us. We are not perfect. The only one that was perfect was Jesus Christ. But I'm on my way to perfection. Amen. I'm not sinless, but I do sure sin less and less and less. Amen. You might have been a pirate of a custer, but let me tell you something. Every now and then, some of those words get out, but you know what? It's not like it used to be because you are in the process of perfection. My visiting friend, there's some of you that says, well, I just can't commit to God because I'm not perfect. Hello. Welcome to the church. I, I just can't serve the Lord because I got some issues. Hello, welcome to the church. We are full of imperfect people that are in need of Jesus Christ. Why has all of us come and traveled miles to get into a church like this? Why do we get excited about the songs? And why do we lift up our hands? Because we realize that without the Lord, we are 30 seconds away of failing. We are 30 seconds away of being a serial killer. But if it had not been for the grace of Jesus Christ that came to He came. We don't have to reach up he came amen don't you neighbor and say thank god prayers keeping me <laughs> because if my nature would come out 30 seconds of losing my family 30 seconds of going back to alcohol 30 seconds of going back to drugs but thank the lord for his grace in truth that came to us. Romans 5, 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience, this is Adam, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. We are sinners not because we sin, but because Adam sinned. And therefore it is in our nature to sin. And when Adam sinned, death began to reign in this world. And we were destined for an eternal death. Amen. You look at one of these beautiful kids, and it doesn't take them real, it doesn't take them much to get off the cross. You know, because we're sinful in nature. Amen. You get one of us outside of the prayer closet, you'll see how sinful some of us are if not all of us. But I thank God that Jesus came to earth. He came to me. And he died for me. And because of his obedience to the cross, we have been made righteous. And that's why Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, verse 30 says, Come to me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Brother Amador, I wonder how many times me and you can perform trying to jump and get to the ceiling. I, I, I wonder how many times until our, our crods and, and, and our, our legs and everything, our feet get extremely tired of trying to perform an extreme huge task. And I've come to the point right now at AJC, and you know what? You may be like, oh my goodness, what's going on with the pastor? I've come to the point, and this is why Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're asking everybody to take six hours to fast. Six in the morning to noon, noon to six, six at night till, you know, midnight. And for some of you traditional folks, that ain't fasting, 6 p.m. till. Let me tell you something. It is for me because I love eating cereal. <laughs> I'm a midnight snacker. <laughs> Amen. If I ever want to get anointed, I'll fast at night. <laughs> I, I walk, sleepwalk to the refrigerator. Amen. Praise God. I think the church is tired of performing. Aren't you tired of performing? Aren't you tired of just trying to be perfect when you're really not perfect? <laughs> I mean, the children of Israel had to constantly keep up with the commandments. 
constantly try to reach a place that was impossible. It was a reminder that this is too big for me. I need a savior. And I want to let you know, congregation, that what Jesus was talking about, about being weary and heavy laden, is by their performance. He said, aren't you tired of overworking yourself, trying to be perfect? Are you tired of trying to be and do good by yourself? See, this is the problem with us is many times we say, I'm going to get myself out of an addiction. I'm going to stay in the Lord. I'm going to do better. I'm going to do. And we lose the purpose of completely relying on the Lord. We need to stop performing and get to the point where we could say, I am a human being who has flaws, shortcomings. You, you know, real quick, and I, I know this is live and it might go to the apostolic headquarters, but I'm going to do something real quick. Let's rewind my introduction. We're so glad to have everybody here. My name is Ben Aguirre, and I am a sinner. And sometimes I just don't feel like praying. And do you think I feel like pastoring all these people? <laughs> Ungrateful? Do you think I have my psychotic moments? You know, and every now and then, I'll have to skip a rated G movie and add another letter before the G. And you know what? Sometimes it even goes way down the alphabet letter. And you know what? I used to have a problem with gossiping. I love hearing other people's problems. I was so insecure in my life that anything would have fulfilled me. Growing up as a pastor's kid, man, I knew about performance. Coming to church on Sunday, doing things on the weekend. I was extremely mad when God took my father home. I cried for three days. Sometimes I overeat. Sometimes I spend more time on Facebook than I do doing humanitarian work. But today, I'm saved by grace. <laughs> I have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm not where I was, and I'm sure not where I want to be. But I'm glad I'm going closer to be like Jesus. And so when they talk about the cross, I get excited. Because if it had not been for Jesus, I wish you would just be quiet and take off your mask and say, God, I need you like I never needed you before. I wish somebody would get to the altar and say, God, I'm going to mess this up. I, I, I wish some of you would say, stop using, I need my Benadryl. And start saying, I'm addicted, and I'm trying to get out of it. But by the grace of God, I will, I will, I will. I'm scared that the cops are going to bring my daughter or son dead and tell me to go and watch over them. But let me tell you, I am confident that God is with me. I'm glad there's a handful. But if you're glad that Jesus came down to you, you would be shouting too. 
of us and there was two vans remember that sister brother Jose sister Chuck the driver had this bright idea that if I gun the van we'll go over the river into the other side I must have had all the luggage amen I'm not just talking about luggage I, I don't know, maybe we just ate too much plantains or something. But our van got stuck in the mid or middle. Of, I'm southern yet. Amen. Brother, Brother Saxon, yeah, praise God. <laughs> in the middle of a rushing river, we had, we had to act upon it. And we got in lines and we held each other. And somebody got a luggage, put it in the, and we're just like holding on. We're working twice as hard. And all of a sudden, here's Brother Sergio cruising down the river. We said, Sergio, this is, and we're in a dire situation. You need to be like that. I'm in the grace of God. I'm in the peace of God. The blood of Jesus. I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody. Your hands are falling apart. You can't see the great
this is, I know for all you, good episode. Oh, you crazy. This church done lost it. You know, we've done lost it. We're tired of overworking ourselves. Come on. The enemy wants to bring condemnation. We've lost too many people in the world because they cussed. Oh, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had some real apostolic. Somebody's on drugs today because we told them they're in sin and they need to go out of the church. You need to remind the devil I am free. I am free. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. We don't need anybody else condemning us. We already got Satan. We already got our conscience. We don't need nobody else pointing fingers. But I want to thank, I thank God for the cross because uh, there is no power in Satan's accusations. That means is he can remind you until he's blue in the face. Uh, but one moment you can look back and say, Satan, I am forgiven. Now I want everybody in this house that has been blood washed, that has been sanctified. Amen. I want you to get the gates of hell and shake it by its roots. Now, if you haven't accepted Christ, you don't have this luxury. You need a Savior. You need to repent. You need to turn from your ways. You need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. But I'm talking about those that have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's shake the gates of hell here today. And I want you to do something. I want you to lift up your hands and say, Lord, forgive me from all of my faults that I have done this week and I stand in your forgiveness right now because your word says you will forgive our iniquities so I am forgiven right now now sit down sit down sweetie sit Church, you never say, come on, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. Let's act like it. I said, let's act like it. Well, I still got bad thoughts. Honey, you're going to have bad thoughts. You got to learn how to control those bad thoughts. Well, you don't know what I saw. Guess what? Welcome to the crew. The enemy will only use one thing, and that is accusations to condemn you. Come on, somebody. I said to condemn you. Hey, man, you can find your place real quick. We need to move. I'm glad you're excited, but... My God, this is some good stuff. I got to move on. We need to stop the performance. <laughs> it's not working. I bought some over $100 shoes, tennis shoes, thinking I'm going to last longer on the treadmill. Didn't work. Should get my money back. I'm not preaching against 
sanctification and the way we dress and the, and the things we do. But let me tell you something. You cannot depend on just coming to church and how you dress to keep you saved. Because <laughs> it's a mind thing. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and we could be in church seven days. We could just pray in the Holy Ghost and they could just take us out, carry us out. But I guarantee you, one hour at your home, your mind's going to start racing. And what's going to happen the next day? I thought you were shouting yesterday. I thought you were running the aisles. You'll, be, you'll, you'll find out how fast the enemy will chain you up based off your past. Amen. We're always talking about performance. But if we believe right, we will live right. And if we can do this on our own, if we, then guess what? We're going to play the part, and we are the worst actors. Amen. And it'll only get us so far. That's why you get some people that will be going to church for 30 days, two months, and then guess what? They're flat out, and we don't see them for another year. Because they try to do it on their own. We need to rely on the cross. Come on. Come on. When the enemy pushes you, you need to push back. And if he pushes you to the point where you even fall, guess what you need to do? Come on. What do you need to do? Get up. Turn to your name and say, get up. Come on. Get up. Well, you don't know. I just... You don't know who I've been with, but you know what? You got a whole new day ahead of you. Get up. I say, get up. Amen. But I've been watching. Get up. Take it back. Turn off the cable. Oh, you don't know who I've been hanging out. Get up. Come on. Come on, you need to get up. There is no excuses. We're all going to fail. And when we fail, we fail hard. But you need to get yourself up. You know, in the tabernacle of Moses, there was not one piece of furniture prepared for the priest to sit on. Under the old covenant, every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices of blood, the, of the blood of bulls and goats, which could never take away sins. Therefore, the work was never finished. Remember? <laughs> Me and Brother Dan, we could do this all night, right? You know, out of breath. Okay, okay, your turn. You try it. You know, maybe, you know. Okay, Reuben, you get on our shoulders and, you know, you try to, let, let me tell you something. The work was never done. Every day there was a priest offering before the, before the Lord because not even the blood of goats and bulls could take away their sins forever. One year, once a year they would go into the, the, the Holy of Holies and they would apply the, the blood. And that would wipe their sins for a whole year. But guess what? It could never take it away forever. And therefore... The priest had to continue standing to minister. But Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 and 14 says, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifices for sin forever, he sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his foot. So I know you're in the Holy Ghost over there, but come on. Hebrews 10, 12 and 14. For by one offering, everybody say one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. When we are set down, we are in the most relaxed state of mind, right? After you're done vacuuming, after you're done cleaning, as soon as you sit down, there's just this, this relaxing. The moment you stand up, you got to do laundry, you got to go make the bologna sandwiches, you got to do so. And, and let me tell you something, when we're constantly standing up and depending on our own performance, we will never have the rest that God wants for us. 
But the Bible goes on to say that Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice, forever he sat down. That means Jesus sat down to demonstrate to us that the word is indeed finished. He was the ultimate sacrifice. That means there was no more work that needed to be done in the temple because he was the ultimate sacrifice. And thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. But Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 and 6, it goes further. And it says, but God who is rich in mercy. <laughs> thank God for his mercy. For the grace and truth that came down to us. For his great love wherewith he loved us. We can never love the Lord like he loves us. Because we are human. Amen. This performance only goes so far. Verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ... By grace ye are saved. Praise God for grace. <laughs> Praise God for grace. Not your performance, not by works, but thank God for the grace of God. I say by the grace of God. Verse 6. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Sitting down is a picture of the believer resting in the finished and completed work of Jesus. Until the church relies on Christ's finished work on the cross, we will continue to be defeated by Satan, live in stress, and haunted by fear. But we must trust and rest in God's perfect work at the cross that it is finished. Come on. It is finished. It's done. Why are you stressing out? Why are you overworking? Let's sit down like Brother Church and let's enjoy the goodness and the greatness of God's love and mercy towards us. Don't turn to your name and say, don't try to work it out. Don't try to worry. Jesus has already worked it out. Come on, he's already worked it out. It's finished. And because it is finished at the cross, we have received everything that Jesus has accomplished for us on the cross. And what did he accomplish on the cross? Salvation, eternal life, peace, forgiveness, healing, grace, and mercy. That's why when we pray, we pray one, Psalms 103, who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our infirmities, who has protected us from destruction, who has crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies, whose mouth is filled with goodness, and my youth shall be renewed like the young eagle. Amen. I dare you look in the mirror and say, I'm getting younger. Because it's already been accomplished at the cross. I'm forgiven. Don't you sit there and let the devil point his fingers and, you know, he already has, you know, other people that he uses to accuse you. Amen. Well, you ain't living right. Well, sweetie, you ain't living right either. That's why you're pointing out these people's issues. Focus on your own issues. Church, we need to learn to focus on our own issues. I had a situation yesterday and I told my wife, I said, you know, God was just dealing with me. I said, Lord, before I even say a, just a word, I need to remember I'm just as bad. And I thank God for the grace of Jesus Christ. I thank God for the grace of Jesus Christ. You need to do this. You need to do that. No, let's teach our children to pray. Amen. We're all a work in process. Amen. 
And us husbands, we can just point the finger. Us wives, we can just. And then when they start pointing our flaws, we get all mad. Well, who made you God? Well, who? <laughs> Amen. The Christian's life is your rest in Christ and his finished work. The devil's assignment against the believers who constantly make us feel condemned and guilty. Because remember, he is the accuser of the brethren. And if you don't get anything here today, one tech, one area that the enemy will always use, and that is to make you feel condemned. Unworthy to pray, unworthy to come to church. But I want to let you know, you need to remind the enemy, this accuser of the brethren. And doesn't he have garbage against us? Come on, son. Does he have garbage against us, true or false? True. But does that garbage have power over us right now? Come on. Does it have power over us right now? It doesn't. It might have flawed your reputation, but guess what? It has no power over your present and where you're going. And you need to remind yourself. Amen. You need to remind yourself. Okay, instead of, I really need it. How are you all going to have Beyonce in your prayer list? It's like Chris Tomlin, blah, and then Beyonce. And you're like, man, you know, every time I hear that song, then I get all, well, take it off your list. Take it off the iPod. And ask God, forgive me that very moment. Amen. Romans 6, 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under grace. I have been made righteous. We are the righteousness of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am the righteousness of God. Come on, turn to somebody else and say, I am the righteousness of God. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. And then we're finishing up, and then the best part, offering and tithes. You thought we forgot, didn't you? <laughs> Amen. Let, let's read Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Come on, you need to read, because this is the Word of God. Right now, you're like, I don't believe this. This is crazy. It's in the Word of God. Amen. Some of you like to be condemned and beat up. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. What was against us? The law. Too big. I'm too small. I can never reach it. I can never reach a holy God. I don't care what you do. Your performance can never reach a holy God. Amen. It cannot reach a holy God our outward appearance is our act of worship amen but this does not make the whole statement of reaching God because we can have all of this and we can <laughs> it don't even get to the heart and so the enemy says okay I got something against the church. I got something against God's people. And that is because they can reach. I mean, Brother Victor, come on. You're skinny. You're fit. Come here, bud. I want you to start running from right here. And then I'm going to try to get you to jump and see how high you can get. I think you could reach it. Go ahead. Ready, set, go. You are such a failure. I don't even know why you are on the face of the earth, really. I mean, you look fit. But you can't jump that high. You're never going to amount to it. You're never going to be loved by God. Uh, why are you even here? Why are you even serving God? You, you know what your heart's going to take you. 
You know where your feet are going. And, and, and let me tell you something. Because the laws were so high, the enemy can use that against you. Because we are underperformed, the enemy will say, don't you even praise God? I know what you did. I know how you just yelled at your wife. And then you want to come to church. Look at she, she thinks you're the biggest hypocrite. And he turns around and looks at his wife and she's like praying. And then he starts believing the lies and she's just saying, God, please just get a hold of him. Let him understand that he's loved. That he's forgiven. And this is the one thing that the enemy has against the church is condemnation. The guilt that he will just be on you. Say, I know what you did yesterday. I know what you're thinking about. I know what your intentions are. Come on, can we be real? Where's, where's the real people? Can we, if we had more he, real people, we'd have more healed people. <laughs> Tweet that. <laughs> Amen. Well, I'm apostolic. I'm apostolic. I'm, get jiggy with it. Get jiggy with it. I'm apostolic. I'm apostolic. Ooh, he, I, I'll take that husband real quick. I'm apostolic. Come on, come on. You know where you're going. You know where you're at. You know that if God would ever expose your junk, people would be like, oh my word. You, we, if anybody needs the altar, it's us. If anybody needs the word of God. If anybody says, you know what, I'll give up six hours to see God is the church. Amen. And he has taken it out of the way, having it nailed to the cross. Let me tell you something. That, that was too high. Guess what? It came down to us. Jesus came down to us. And everything that we couldn't do because we could never reach it, guess what? It came down and it became sin for us. And it was nailed to the cross. And therefore, it has been disarmed. Praise God. Having disarmed principalities and powers, made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Yes. Amen. Come here, bud. So the next time the enemy said, come on, let's try that. You could do it. You're fit. You've been in the Lord all you Start over there and try to reach. Amen. The moment the enemy's just waiting for him to fall short of not reaching the ceiling. Jesus. Grabs you. Nope. <laughs> you don't have to reach up here. I'm coming to you. And because I came to you. So, Deborah, what are you saying about him? Come on. What, what, what do you have to say about him? Let me tell you, you need to have that reminder when the enemy comes. Devil. Okay. <laughs> I am forgiven. All of my faults have been nailed to a cross. And I am the righteousness of God. Jesus came down full of grace. No, full of truth. No. You need to start dancing. I'm forgiven. You need to start singing. I'm forgiven. You need to start praising God. I am forgiven. Hallelujah. The only thing that the enemy had against you that he has no power is the accusation. I am forgiven. I'm not happy about it. I'm embarrassed about it. I feel bad falling again. But you know what? Get up. And I've come to let you know right now as your pastor, wherever you're at, whatever you've done, I've come to let you know you've been blood washed, you've been sanctified, get up. Come on, you're better than that. Get up. Get up. And sit at your rightful place. 
in God. I am forgiven. <laughs> and unless we can become real, then we're going to be healed. And the reality is that, you know what, I can't perform it. Why you go to prayer so much? Why you go to Bible? Because you remember me. You remember me. <laughs> we used to roll those streets and do all kinds of crazy things. I need to be in church. It's my act of worship. Amen. It gets me just reaffirmed. My place in God is my opportunity to lift up my hands and worship God. We need this. We need to be together. We need people to encourage us. We don't need more people to accuse us because we already have Satan in our conscience that's doing a great job. What we need is people to say, you know what? You're not the first, you're not the last. Get up. Come on, get up. But I said a bad word. You know what? Get up. God, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Get up. I just saw just brains being blown out and, you know, just like, you, you know, man, that movie was just like Pulp Fiction. Come on. Come on. Get up. You should have been cleaning the church. Get up. Get up. Don't give the enemy ammunition against you. I, I, a couple of weeks ago, I had a, a, a young man come to, come to me. I was out in the foyer. He says, Pastor, if you didn't see me at church, it's just because I feel like a hypocrite. I can't let go of such and such things. And I, I just feel like a hypocrite when I come. So I just stopped coming. I said, Bud, I'd rather have you come in a church while you're in the process of getting better. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Well, I got a Lego smoke. No, you know what? Get a church. Come on, I'll give you some gum for two and a half hours. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Chew the gum. Chew the gum. But it will pray you through the Holy Ghost and will help you get through it. Do not stay away from God or His people until you get perfect. There are no perfect people. But they dress different. You know why? We are in the process of change. But this doesn't make us perfect. It doesn't. Does the only thing that makes us in the process of perfection is the cross? What was done at the cross? And the second thing is my profession I am forgiven. So I want us to disarm the enemy for a few moments. Right now, I want, he, I want us to strip them naked from all of the ammunition that we as a church has given him. And then we're going to go in. Hey, praise God, somebody left some money. Hey, Amen, I'll double that too. Hey, listen, church, listen. I've been weeping and I've been so sad because we have lost people. There's people out in the streets. There's people in other churches that should have been in our chairs. Because they didn't understand the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because we were so caught up in performance. Church, we're not sinless. We sin less and less and less and less. Less farting, less bad words, less and less 
And guess what? It gets better as you just get deeper in the Lord and you fall in the presence of God. And when you start singing songs at the choir, and let me tell you something. My last scripture is 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 7. I wish I could just sit here all day and just hug all of you and just say, come on. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 and 17 says, this is a faithful, say with me, this is, this is the Apostle Paul. How many know the Apostle Paul? I mean, the greatest apostle. I mean, this guy wrote a bunch of epistles in the New Testament. This is the man. This is the man. We preach off his stuff. I mean, God has given him revelation over revelation. And he's saying, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception. That Christ Jesus came, thank God. That he came. Come on. I'm so grateful that he came. Come on. We couldn't reach it. But he came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. <laughs> it starts with you. All having a Benegiri pulpit moment. Let's continue. How bit for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. You, you know, you might look at us, maybe Brother Amador, myself, Sister Isela, my, my Sister Aguirre. Think, oh, I can't go to church. Look here. They're just so beautiful. And look how they, uh, let me tell you something. All of us. Are just examples of God's mercy and His kindness. That Brother Art testified where he could have been, but by the mercy, not by our performance, <laughs> not the big A that we have on our shirt. It's just God's grace and mercy. That's why when Brother, I mean, most Brother Moses was on it. Your grace is enough. I mean, that's all that we need. Amen. And he says, for all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. If anybody here, AJC, real quick, if you have lived a life of drugs, games, just, I mean, you, the list goes on, just embarrassing things that if people would know, their jaws would drop. If you have lived a life like that, and God has forgiven you, and he has given you this opportunity to serve him, I want you to stand up, AJC members. <laughs> Mercy, grace. Our examples are just the people on the street, but by the grace of God. I'm so glad you're here. You're in that process. Keep coming. Keep confessing. And he says, but do all long suffering as a pattern in those who are going to believe on him for everlasting. For those that are not in the Lord, for those that haven't accepted Jesus Christ, I want you to look at these beautiful people that Jesus Christ has set free. And you know what's Apostles Paul, his response? You know what his response is in verse 17? It's not like, oh, I'm forgiven, so I'm going to go party more. I'm going to go do this more. Oh, pastor said it's not about my conduct, so I'm going to go take it. No, don't use grace to take advantage. But now, in a, a return of gratefulness, he says, now unto the king eternal, immortal. Invisible, the only wise God, the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That is our response. Come on, church. That is why we get excited coming. That is why we whistle. That is why we shout. That's why we dance. That's why the organ plays. 
because unto the King eternal, immortal, invincible, the only wise God, be all honor, all glory, forever and ever. Amen. And amen. Amen. That is our response. Now, I want us for the next minute, I want as many people, you can come flood the altar, get out of the aisles. I want you just to praise God as you declare, I am forgiven. Come on. Everything that I need. And I'm I, today, just the Holy Ghost has been talking about forgiveness. But you know what? You're healed. If you're, in, if you're going through something, you need to declare, I am healed. We've had some situations going on here. People being healed from cancer and tumors. People that haven't been able to have a baby. They're now pregnant. This is the power of God, church. I said, this is the power of God. And I want us for the next minute, so I want us to just cover this house and just celebrate that you are forgiven. Come on. God, hey, stop trying to reach out for it. Just lift up your hand, forgiven. I receive your love. I receive your grace. I receive your mercy. I want to invite some visiting friends. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is the day. This is the moment. You don't need a wait to be perfect. You don't need a wait till you clean up, until things change. While we were yet sinners, Jesus loved us. While we were yet sinners. And all we got to say is, God, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I want to make you the Lord of my life. I want you to come into this vessel. Because the wages of sin, it is death. <laughs> if I continue to live like I'm living, I am going to die, not just physically, but eternally. Separated from God. I want to invite somebody here today that you've just returned back to the Lord. Maybe this is your first day back in church and you've just been burdened by just the enemy. Then you'll never jump that high. You've given up your virginity. You've given up this. I know what you've been looking. I know what you've been hearing. I know what you've been thinking. And you just need to say, God, thank you for coming to me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you. Just lift up your hands, everybody, right now. Come on, just receive the love of God. Come on, just receive the love of God. He loves you so much. We don't need to leave you. We, we don't need you to leave us. You don't know, Pastor, what I've done. God does, but He loves you. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so shameful. But Jesus died on the cross. He died on the cross. And therefore, all you need to do is just confess, you are my Lord. Forgive me. He's just, He's not like us. He's not like the judge. In Stanislaus County, he's not like our parents. He's not like our friends that have disowned us. He's better than that. He's perfect in his love and his ways. That's it. Shout to your rabbi. Come on, I want everybody to declare your forgiveness. Come on. Come on. Come on, let's sit down in the presence of God here today. Come on, let's sit down in the presence of God. And this was just a hard week, Pastor. Well, you know what? Welcome to the team. But you need to know your placement. Jesus came. Jesus loves you. Now I want you just to lift up your voices, everybody. Just some music. I don't want singing because I don't want that to drown. Just this heart of forgiveness. If you don't got the Holy Ghost, just say, God, I really need you. <laughs> I really need you. And you know what? I want to 
on, everybody, real quick. I want you to look at me. You know what we're, you know what we're experiencing right now? Everybody in this house that's hearing the Word of God, because this is just the Word of God, is you are receiving a revelation of God's cross, of the cross of Jesus Christ. You're receiving the revelation of God's great love and of His grace towards you. Because you've been so used to be just slammed by accusation. You've been so used to short-handed by everybody else's point of view. But today, I want to let you know God loves you. His love is deep. It's wide. The height of it cannot be measured. And you know what? You're in it right now. And if you would just lift up your hands, everybody throughout this congregation. Come on. You'll never know the revelation of God's love until you've fallen. You'll never know the revelation of God's grace until you have done something. And you have felt the love of Jesus Christ. Come on, you don't need to kill yourself. You don't need to every day be reminded that's not the thoughts of God. God's not there to remind you. He knows your conscience and the accuser does a great job. He's reminding you, you are the righteousness of Him. You are in right standing. That one day you will be perfect and that's only in heaven. But He loves you right now in, your pro in this process. There's so many hearts being open. I need some people just to help me pray with others here today. Come on. Somebody's being restored. You're going to come back to the Lord. You're going to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You're going to continue to walk. I am forgiven. I am set free. But I fall short all the time. Break it. Stop being on your own performance and say, God, I can't do it without you. I cannot do it without you. I want everybody just to lift up your hands and I just want you to let go of yourself. Come on. Let's be real so we can heal. Come on. Let's be real so we can heal. I need the sound people. Everybody on your feet. Come on. Let it go. Come on. Let it go. I just can't change. Of course you can. Only God can do it. It's the work of the Holy Ghost. It's the work of the Holy Ghost. It's the work of the Holy Ghost.
on every AJC member right now. Come on, we got to be real so we can heal. And that has to be that the inner longing that we need God in the center of our life, of everything that we have. If we don't, we will fail and we will fail miserably. And I want us right now, if you can just open up your hand, lift up your hand and open up your voice and let there be such a desperation, a cry of desperation. Come on. It's in those times of brokenness. That dependence, I need you, God. Come on. Well, I don't know why I'm always getting socked up. When's the last time you broke yourself before the Lord? When's the last time you say, God, I need you? God. That's it. Come on. Shut your Come on, it's not about performance. It's about your dependence on the Lord. It's your dependence on the Lord. It's your dependence on the Lord. Come on, it's too late to call the fire engines when your house is on fire. God, there's some smoke in my house. There's some smoke in my personal life, God. I need you. I need you, God. That's it. That's it. No music. I want everybody. Let's just cry out to the Lord. Come on. Come on, receive your love right here, this moment. So wherever you're at, just lift up your hands and all reliance on God. Come on. Just all reliance on God. You'd be amazed. How fragile we are. You'd be amazed how fragile we are without the Lord. Without the Lord, without our dependence on Him. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. So you could go months and then you get hit hard. Why go months and hit hard? Let's just go day by day relying on the presence of God. Gordon, day by day relying on the grace and the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we pray with somebody right now? Come on, right next to you. Come on, let's pray with each other. Come on, let's pray with each, with each other. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, AJC is going to help you. Step by step. Step by step. You're welcome. Sit in, our, in, sit in those chairs. Hear the word of God. 
We won't judge you step by step by step. We're going to see it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We're not sinless. We just sin less and less and less. Because we have the nature of Christ. We have the nature of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go and give somebody, give five people a big hug. Just tell them, rely on the presence of God. Rely on the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't use this grace to take advantage of it. Use this grace to respond in worship to the Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Now we're getting ready to see a baptism. Before you leave this place, I want everybody right now, I need the ushers to make your way up. We're going to give our tithes and our offerings. We're going to sing that song, A Champion Lives in... Amen. Now church, if now that you got more revelation of the Word of God, that through the cross it is finished, I believe you can respond with everything that you have as they sing this song. Amen. At this time, I want you to come and bring your tithes and your offerings as they sing. Yes, go ahead. God bless you. There's going to be a baptism, a celebration. But we are more than a conqueror here today. Because Christ is with us. Amen. Why don't we stand up on our feet and then just clap and celebrate. I am forgiven.
theme song every time he comes up to bat. And I would always tell him, I'd sing this song that we're singing right now. That's how good God is. And I'd say, you know, you, there's a song that we sing at church that says you're a champion. And I claim that that's going to be your song one day. And it's amazing how we're singing this song right now. And that he's getting ready to get his feet wet and go down in the name of Jesus. So rejoice with me, please. Put your dancing shoes on. this moment the enemy had an accusation against Isaac that the wages of sin is death and that he will always be condemned by his decisions but he came with grace and truth and he called him and now all of his past is going to be under the blood. And when he rises up, I am forgiven. I am in a process, but I am forgiven. Amen. Can we celebrate that? That you will see the enemy's armies being disarmed right now as he goes down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ. And he is now forgiven. He's no longer condemned. And he's going to be free in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to hit the biggest ball out of the park here today, and that is sin. I know we shouted with him when he got home runs and he got scholarships to college and and he would hit those balls. But now let's shout because he hit sin out of the park because it was nailed to a cross. Hallelujah in Jesus.
let's just do a forgiven dance. Can we just rejoice that grace and truth came down to us? I feel the unction of the, oh my gosh. I feel the unction of the Holy Ghost.
God bless you, but I feel the overflow of the Holy Ghost. Somebody's going to have to drive us home here today. Because I feel the unction of the Holy Ghost. We are forgiven and we know we are. We're set free and we know we are. In the, I dare you to get out of your aisle or get your purse and go home. But the Holy Ghost is here. Shantaya, 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 Shanta